Yo, what is up guys? So for today we are doing a dungeon guide and I'm probably gonna do the whole thing. If not, I'll cut it in chunks. If I cut it in chunks, then look, look forward to the next one. If not, then ignore what I just said. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open a tier three or higher chest of Altars of Sorrow and defeat 20 Nightmares as well. So Altars of Sorrow is basically Escalation Protocol from Mars. It's basically essentially the same thing. I think this is a little bit cooler because it just is. And I actually ended up getting one of the new sh uh, shotguns, which the that has the hive carapace. And my mind has actually changed a little bit. I do think these are a little bit better than what I previous lot thought because some person commented, I'll put, probably put it on the screen, but they commented this and it really did change my mind about it. I was like, you do, you bring up a lot of good points. And even though, it does piss me off still that they're reskins. I do appreciate them more now. So thank you. I'll put them on the screen. I don't, sorry, but thank you for changing my mind about that. But the next step is you're going to go to Eris. And if you went as high as I did, you'll probably have um, some stuff waiting for you in that area. So I ended up going to where you can uh, get all the, like, the armor and the weapons. I forget what it's called, but I went there. And I ended up getting a really good grenade launcher, which is the Love and Death, the new one. But the really cool thing about that one is it's an aggressive frame with the ability to drop spike grenades and full court. Full court does more increased damage the farther you are from an enemy. I got that roll. And I, I've been losing my shit ever since because that's, a, that's like... Oh, man. I know people who are trying to get this roll, and I was just like look at me i'm trash i literally don't play this game as much as i used to and i just got this role so that made me laugh and i wanted to share that but once you go to eris she'll be like hey yo uh psh, dungeon question mark and go to the dungeon so the way you find the dungeon is you basically go to the map you're gonna it's gonna be available in the sorrows harbor part of the map it's gonna be like right up on the top left click it and then you'll go into the dungeon <coughs> So for this part of the dungeon, feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. You can use a shotgun. I would prefer you guys use a shotgun, a scout, a pulse maybe, because you are going to have to take down strong enemies from afar. So I ended up using like Izanagi's Burden for like the whole thing, to be honest, because I just love Izanagi's Burden. But I changed my energy slot a lot and my grenade and my uh, heavy slot a lot. But Izanagi's never really changed. So go all the way down enjoy the spookiness because it's really cool after that you'll come to this place and in this area you'll have three enemies that you're gonna want to remember the first is a knight with a shield a shrieker and a wizard go down to any of the pillars to find out what's there you're gonna have to kill a yellow bar knight first and then just kill out all the trash around him just to be safe go in the room and whatever you find is gonna be beneficial no matter what order you're in because if it's uh, the green knight, the arm, sorry, the green sword bearers, you're going to have to kill them in order to grab their sword. The little bit that's different here is that the sword, the light, the light attack is the same, but the heavy attack is now a ranged attack and the block is you can now deflect incoming damage back at the enemy except melees so once that happens you're gonna want to see once you kill the sword bearer you're gonna see some runes um from top to bottom follow that order go to each room and kill each boss so the way you kill all of those uh <clears throat> enemies like the shielded knight the only way to attack him is to do light attacks all you have to do light attacks and supers supers hit all of the all of the three enemies but the uh, light attack is the usual way to, to kill them so what i ended up doing was i did two lights and then block two lights block two lights block that's what i ended up doing and then super when you have it the shrieker the way i did it the first time was i just used my super and then killed them that way but the real way is to block their their bullets and then deflect them towards them. So just aim at them when you're deflecting and you'll just kill them fast. 
the wizard in this instance has two other wizards i would say kill the two wizards first have make sure you have like a solar weapon to get their shields down faster what what i ended up doing was i ended up using my grenade launcher to take the shields down and then izanagi burning them in the face so after those two were killed the heavy attack is what takes the wizard down you could take the, the wizard down with the super as well. I wouldn't recommend it though because it doesn't, uh, the pathing is really weird. So you might, sometimes you might not get it and she can melt you down really fast. So after you kill all those three, you're gonna see a pillar of light or a beam of light in the sky, go to it. Make sure you kill everything around it first because if you don't, they will destroy you and you will have, to, and you will die and you will have to do the whole thing all over again like I did so kill everything around there and then once after like I don't know why after everything's dead it'll proc and then the door will open and enjoy your first uh, drop whatever it is I, I, I got a sword for this next area I was using top tree void hunter with six coyote and Izanagi's burden but you can use your shotgun if you want this one you don't need a sniper rifle this area is like a maze in the fact that it's three paths connected with caves everywhere. I think this was actually really well done. I might have, this might have been my favorite part, to be honest. So like I said before, there are three paths, left, mid, and right, depending on where you're facing. Left has a huge open area on its left side. Middle has a red light glow to it. And the right side has just wall, like white walls. That's the way I traverse through. Now the big elephants in the room are three big ass ogres going back and forth to each path. What I ended up doing was using my hunter with top tree void for the dodge invisibility and six coyote for the double dodge. And my cloak had two perks to increase the speed in which I got my, do my dodge back. So the main focus of this is to go down to each path and find the wall that's filled with runes. The runes doesn't matter considering, at least it doesn't matter to me because I just got an orb and just slammed when I could. Just look at the video where the orbs are because explaining this would be a bitch. But once you find an orb, go down to the path, and slam them down, and then go to like each each uh, path has its own wall to slam. Once you're done with that, you're, you're done. You're going to the next area. This is the part of the dungeon that I actually lost my shit more than once. Actually, a lot of times. Basically, you have to make sure that the Annihilator does not kill you. A great way to know that it's gonna about to kill you is it'll ding. Once it dings, you have like 10 seconds to run back and make sure that the, the Annihilator like forms back. If you are literally anything other than a hunter, this is gonna be easier for you since hunters don't have like a healing rift or barricades, but we do have invisibility. So what I ended up doing was using middle tree void with graviton forfeit, forfeit for the added three seconds, bringing my total invis up to 12 seconds, which I definitely used. I also ended up using two weapons that I didn't think I would use, which is hush for the fact that my hip fire headshots are actually pretty easy with this and edgewise for the grenade energy and it has feeding frenzy so it helped me kill everything faster when i did use it and obviously like i said izanagi's burden never took it off so in this area you're gonna have to slam six orbs behind the annihilator each orb drops from a yellow barred knight that spawn on your left middle and right so after you kill one and slam two boomers will two boomers will spawn in front of the annihilator top left and top right after that rinse and repeat Oh, and a fuck ton of trash mobs will be coming at you. Like Thrall, Exploding Thrall, Acolytes that keep throwing grenades at you and they will leave a fire that, ha yes, will kill you. And it killed me more than once. So the strategy I used was to always stay invisible and never be out of it. 
I always knew that my next shot was either going to get, give me my invis back or was going to be close to giving it back to me. A great way of this is once you slam an orb down, you should already be invisible from killing the knight before, so your invis should already be almost up. From there, kill the boomers that spawn and rinse and repeat. Not gonna lie, this was super hard, but after I finished it, I felt amazing. If I were to give some advice to Titans, Warlocks, or a team, I would say Titans should go either Bubble with Helm of Safe 14, or Middle Tree Void with Ursa Furiosa for the super energy bag and blocking. For Warlocks, Middle Tree Solar for the healing with either Starfire Protocol for double grenades, or Phoenix Protocol for the super energy bag on kills within the super. And for groups, literally the same, but hunters should go with either ad control or getting the orbs. So either an invis loadout like mine or an arc bottom tree with radon flux for ad control. <clears throat> the next area is another maze, but this time you can die from so many things. So first make sure you see what runes you have to go to since you need to find them in order to get out of this area. Real quick, if you have a sword, I would highly recommend you use it since you could use it to save yourself from tricky situations. And it is also useful as well. So honestly, the biggest advice I can give you is don't be impatient and memorize where you're going. Again, explaining where each rune tower is would be way too much time and honestly, it's not that hard. I did all of this without dying, not trying to toot my own horn, but it. I just want to show you how easy it was. Like, it, this was really simple. There's also an extra chest here that I will be showing you, but yeah, honestly, go everyone, you'll find them all. And make sure you see the runes carefully because I thought I had a, two of the same, but I didn't. They're just really similar. Once you get to the Cradle of Damnation, that's it, you're at the boss, you're almost done. So once you're here, there will be three towers holding the Shielded Knight, the Shrieker, and the Wizard from the beginning. And three of those green sword bearers on each side. The order of the towers are left is Shielded Knight, middle is the Shrieker, and right is the Wizard. That's the order if you're facing the, the fire guy. So how I did it was I killed the green sword bearer. I killed the one on my left and then went to the Shrieker since her shots can actually get you even if you're not in the tower. So I deflect until I kill her, then kill everything else since they will get in the way. Then I went to the shield, shielded knight. Ignore the void orb, you don't need it now. I would recommend you guys to kill the adds always since they do get in the way. So once it's just you and the knight, you could either do two light attacks then block or you can just wait until your super's up. I ended up just waiting until my super was up because your sword ammo doesn't go down, but it does go down if you block or attack. So if you use your super, it actually does not go down. Not only that, but it only takes three slams to kill him. Once that's done, go to the wizard. Don't use your super on her. You can, but the pathing is really weird and it's not worth it at the same time since she can kill you. So just keep uh, doing the heavy attack on her. The way I'm doing it, it's the safest way. After she's killed, kill everything in the field, so all the green sword bearers, acolytes, and the thrall. Once every everyone is killed, some void ball, some void balls will spawn back, either before or after. Actually, now that I remember, slam everything down except the last one. Before you slam the last one, make sure everything is killed, so that way you can have a few moments of just boss DPS. Once you slam, he'll attack. Jump out of the way and stay in the green area near the crystal. That's the only way to damage him. After a few moments, some exploding thrall will spawn in. I just ignored them until they got close enough for me to actually do something about it. Then after that, he'll slam his blade down and you'll have like five seconds to get out of the green stuff or he'll wipe you guys. And after that, it's literally rinse and repeat. 
For this, I ended up using Solar Bottom Tree with Celestial Nighthawk, Izanagi's Burden, and Swarm of the Raven. For Titans, I would recommend probably Bubble with maybe Helm of Saint 14, or maybe Peregrine and Greaves with Top Tree Solar for damage and the debuff. That's only if you really like the Solar. For Warlocks, you guys have a bit more to offer. You could go Middle Tree Solar for heals with Starfire Protocol for double grenades. Bottom Tree Void for healing yourself and the Noble Bomb last after you use it. That'll do tick damage on top of the damage you're already doing on him. And the last one is Middle Tree Arc with Geomag Stabilizers for the increased super duration. This all works well within a team as well, so just go ham. Honestly, this isn't hard at all. The only reason it took me two hours was because I tend to be super impatient, which ends up fucking me over in the long run. But after a while, I tended to be more careful and I didn't take any chances as you guys probably noticed here. I didn't need to start another rotation. I could have reloaded my Izanagis and shot him in the face, but I was so afraid of dying that I just decided, fuck it. I know I can do this without dying, so let's just do it again. And that's pretty much it. I know this video is going to be pretty long if I do keep it in just one video. But what do you guys think about this guide? I know it's a little weird, but this is literally like I just I just finished it last night. I was super tired. I knew I wanted to make a video. So let me know what you guys think. Did you guys solo it like I did? Do you guys have a team? Did you guys actually solo it without dying? If you did, uh, throw that big dick on the comments below. Other than that, let me know what you guys think about pretty much everything. I actually think the dungeon was well done. I think the rewards are okay. I ended up getting a masterworked arms and I ended up getting a ship from it, which I thought was pretty amazing, I guess, even though it's a reskin. But other than that, let me know what you guys think about the video. Comment below. Follow me on my social media outlets. Links are in the description below and I'll see you guys later. Since last we spoke, your fire team delved into the moon's depths and disrupted their dark ritual. But there is still much we do not know. On what powers did the Hive seek to call? What does it have to do with the Pyramid? And what do the Dread Queens Savathun and Zebu Arath think of this new shade of darkness? Stay vigilant. If my sight is true, the Hive will attempt this ritual again. You must be there to stop them.